This task asks you to solve proportions using a baseline value and using that as a template to then solve for other values not included. So it says that a dragonfly can fly 50 feet every two seconds. When you're new to proportions, the easiest way to mess up is not establishing your proportions correctly when you're trying to make two of them. So I like to do, because 50 is larger than the two, I'm going to put uh, feet, feet over seconds, okay? So my value for the distance is over the value of time. Well, it says that I have 50 over two. Now it says I have 375 feet, and I'm asking, well, how long does it take for that? Well, 375 is a distance, so it needs to go on the top of my fraction over my unknown, okay? So two ways I can do this is I can find out 50 times what got me 375, or take 375 divided by 50. Uh, let's do that. 375 divided by 50, and that's saying 7.5, so 7.5. So then I take 2 and I multiply it by 7.5, which would, when I'm 7.75 uh, 7 twice, is going to be 15. So this says x is 15. I also have a bunch of other ways I can solve that. So this is using equivalent fractions. I could also use the cross multiplication of proportions. 50 times x is 50x, and 375 times 2, just so that I don't make a jerk of myself, I'm going to go ahead and do that on a calculator, which is 750. When I then divide 50 off of both sides, I can cancel out the zeros. How many fives can I take out of 75? Guess what? It's 15. The other thing is I could find a unit rate. Well, if I travel 50 feet in two seconds, how many feet do I travel in one second? Okay? Um, so that's probably, that's, this is going to imply better for the seconds, but you have, so the proportional cross multiplication or just the equivalent fraction method to get the 15. Now here it's saying, you fly for 20 seconds, how far do you go? Again, a couple different ways. We, again, establish distance over time. So I know I have time, but I don't know the distance. So I can cross multiply and get five times two is 10 and zero and zero. So it says a thousand and two times X is two X. When I divide both sides by two, I get X equals 500. So I should be able to get 500. All right, the other thing, so let's erase that. We're, we're not out of options here, okay? So if I have two seconds, and now I'm trying to find, I need to go 20 seconds, that is 10 times this amount of time. So I go 10 times 50. 50 times 10 is 500. So I also got that the distance is 500. The other thing is breaking it down to a unit rate. If I travel 50 feet every two seconds, when I divide two into 50, I get 25. So I travel 25 feet per second. I'm going to do this 20 times. So when I multiply it by 20, after I've gotten my unit rate, I'm then able to get 500 over 20. Okay, because if I have two times 25, I have 50, and then I just tack a zero on. So it took 500, I was able to go 500, or I wasn't, the dragonfly was able to go 500 feet in the 20 seconds. So the next set of questions had to do with the frog hop, and that frog is able to travel 60 feet in four seconds. When we try to find the unit rate, we're trying to find out how far that, tra that frog travels every second. So we set this up as a fraction. 
60 over 4. So then if I divide 4 into 60, I'm able to find out the distance each second took the frog. So let me get that. 60 divided by 4. It's 15. So the, tr the frog is able to travel 15 uh, yeah, it's actually the equivalent 15 feet per second. Okay, by getting that unit rate, I can calculate a lot of other unknowns. In particular, it's asking, well, if the, tra the frog travels 15 feet in one second, how far then is it going to go in 30 seconds? So we set it up as distance over time. So 15 over one, 15 feet, one foot, or one second, sorry. Now I have 30 seconds. So I got a whole bunch of options. The easiest one is going to be cross multiplication because using the proportions method, one times x is x. So then if I just multiply 15 by 30, I get my answer. And 15 times 30 is going to be 450. So, and I knew I needed to do that. 1 times 30 gets 30, so 15 times 30 gets the 450. So the story problem about the hamburger is going to be, in solving this, making sure your proportions are set up correctly and uniformly is going to be essential. So the story problem is saying that you have, if you start with 210 pounds of hamburger uncooked, when it's all done, you're left with 140 cooked. So when I think of that, I think of my starting amount to make the whole hamburger as the 210. My whole amount is always my bottom number. So that's how I'm going to set up my proportion here. I'm going to have uncooked, undercooked. Because after I'm done cooking, only a part of that amount is left. So cooked over uncooked. Now that I have that, it's asking me to figure out, well, if I have one pound uncooked, how much is that going to be when it's cooked? So I'm going to set up my proportions. So I'm going to make sure I have it cooked over uncooked, cooked over uncooked. Cooked is 140, uncooked is 210. I have an unknown amount uncooked, or sorry, cooked, and I have one pound uncooked. So then I could use my cross multiplication. I'm basically, what I'm trying to find out is my unit rate, um, or what it simplifies down to, how these convert. So if I take 140 times one, I have 140. So I use my proportional method, cross multiplying, and 210 times x equals 210x. Now to reduce that, I divide both sides by 210. So 140 divided by 210 turns into 0 0.66666 indefinitely. You should be familiar with this as a benchmark value as a fraction, and that would be 2 thirds. So it is 2 thirds, x is 2 thirds of a pound when cooked for number 5. Okay? So based on that, that gives me a nice proportion to be able to work with here. All right, so if I have 400 pounds of cooked burger, how much did I have to start with to get that much? So again, we'll go cooked over uncooked, and I know cooked over uncooked. So cooked, I have 400. Well, what is gonna, what got me there? So I cross multiply. 400 times 3 gives me 1,200, and 2 times x equals 2x. Now to solve for x, I divide 2 off of both sides, so I cut the 1,200 in half. So I need 600 pounds of burger in order to get a 400-pound quantity after it's done cooking.